In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the mechanical equivalent of heat, which is where we actually start relating thermal energy and mechanical energy. Uh, this whole idea of a calorie actually came around in the mid to late 1700s, and it's not an SI unit, but rather it's the leftovers of a theory that is proven to be wrong. Uh, this theory was put forth by Antoine Lavoisier. He was a very good chemist, but had a misunderstanding of how heat worked. What he said was heat is due to the presence of a caloric fluid, uh, and this caloric fluid could move into or out of an object. The more caloric it had, the more thermal energy it was there. The more caloric it had, the warmer the substance was. Um, and it was just this motion of caloric fluid that determined something's temperature. Furthermore, large objects could contain more caloric than smaller pieces, which is why breaking something up or grinding it up or cutting would produce a whole bunch of heat because all that caloric fluid leaked out. Uh, and there was even laws about this. It was conserved a it was considered a conserved quantity. So the law of conservation of caloric says, hey, we can't create or destroy caloric fluid, which means heat can't be changed into anything else. Heat can't be turned into useful work, nor work converted into heat. Uh, so this seems really alien to us and weird, but this was actually um, fairly well supported, and there was a lot of uh, research that had gone into this. And you got to remember that at this time, atomic theory was brand new, and almost nobody believed it yet. Like It took another hundred years for atomic theory to be widely accepted. So the idea that heat could be related to the motion of atoms was alien because the idea of atoms was still alien. But through the work of lots of scientists, uh, we were able to move from the idea of caloric fluid to energy being energy, all, all of it the same. A couple of the scientists who were very involved in this were Count Rumsford. He was actually born in America, but moved to Europe around the time of the American Revolution. Anyways, he happened to be uh, involved in the process of making cannons and noticed that when the water used to cool cannon barrels uh, was poured on the cannons, it boiled away and had to be replenished and replenished and replenished. But it still did that even when the machinery was too dull to cut into the ca cannon anymore, which means it wasn't because the caloric was leaking out of the pieces as they broke apart, but rather the mechanical energy that was used to cut into the cannon was being converted directly into heat and making the water uh, evaporate. And Rumsford believed that this could be explained by assuming that the motion of the particles was changing and it was the mechanical energy uh, that was responsible for heating up the water and making it move more, which took two things and, and put them together, the idea of atomic theory and the idea that mechanical energy and heat are actually one and the same thing. James Prescott Joule actually supported this and could make the measurements to do it. Now Joule was a brewer, so he had access to some fairly precise thermometers which allowed him to measure very small temperature changes in water. And what he did was he designed an experiment where a falling mass drove a paddle wheel through water uh, and he was able to calculate the work done by the falling mass and measure the change in temperature of the water which allowed him to relate the work done, the mechanical work done, to the change in temperature of the water. His apparatus is shown here. This falling mass over here would drop down, spinning these paddles, and he could measure very precisely the temperature change of that water. Now, it took several years and lots of publications and talks and arguments, but people eventually came around to this idea that, yes, uh, heat, caloric, is actually really just another form of energy, which leads to the first law of of uh, thermodynamics, which is essentially the law of conservation of energy. Now, we know today that one kilocalorie is 4,186 joules. This is the mechanical equivalent of heat um, because a calorie is defined as the amount of energy required to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius or a kilocalorie, one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. If we can relate that amount of energy to a mechanical energy, we're good to go. Okay. So the SI unit that we use for specific heat should be joules, not calories. So we're going to use joules per gram Kelvin, but because a change of one Kelvin is also a change of one degree Celsius, we can use joules per gram degree Celsius. Therefore, the specific heat of water is 4.186 joules per gram degree Celsius. And everything else, when we're using these in calorimetry equations, we're probably going to switch to joules per gram degree Celsius because that is the SI unit for temperature.